the subacromial subdeltoid injection is one of the most common injections we do in the clinic for shoulder pain. I'll run over a brief overview of the solenoid anatomy here. Now this particular individual has predominantly subscapularis tendinosis and the video was of the injection and not necessarily of the diagnostic scan. particular injection I like to use a reasonably high frequency transducer. We can get away with down to about 12 megahertz or so, but I like to use the 18 and 5 that I have. So we're also quite superficial. You can see that in this individual who's a fairly muscular uh, individual, we're only down to 3 centimeters at most. So let's review some of the anatomy here. So the first portion here is the skin and then deep to that we have uh, the fibroadipose tissue so this is the adipose here and these are the fibroadipose septa right here deep to that we have muscle so this is the deltoid muscle here and then we have a hyperechoic boundary right here, which is the deep fascial layer of the deltoid. And then that interfaces on the potential space of the subdeltoid bursa. And that would be delineated by this hypoechoic line just deep to the hyperechoic inferior portion of the deltoid. And then superior to that, we have the supraspinatus tendon. So the supraspinatus tendon, which is or oblique to it here, is like this. And then we have the um, bone here. This is actually some cartilage. And then this is oblique on the biceps tendon, which we'll see in a few minutes. For this injection, our target is going to be the subdeltoid bursa right here. Sometimes you have to really force it to dissect away the bursa, can it, it can be quite tight. You don't really want to get into the tendon, although it will take some fluid and it will expand. You also don't really want to be in the muscle itself, although I suspect if you're using steroids, then you'll get a local effect regardless. So what we're going to do is put a needle in. We're going to go from left to right here across the screen. We're going to infiltrate the subdeltoid bursa space. So the tip is now placed into the subdeltoid subacromial bursa. I'm injecting 40 milligrams of dexamedrol and about 2 milliliters of 2% xylocaine for this particular individual. He has subscapularis tendinosis, and so this injection is actually a bit oblique over the rotator interval, as you can see here, and the fluid is now traveling all the way medial towards the superior portion of the um, supraspinatus itself. I'm just going to back off a second here and we can look at the um, last little bit of the injection. You can see that this is actually this hyperechoic fluid and this is the particulate corticosteroid. So both um, depomedrol and uh, triencinolone uh, can cause this a hyperechoic uh, reflector. It's not a good idea to do this right at the beginning. Um, so if you inject air um, or sometimes a lot of this um, um, particular corticosteroid, you can get a posterior cupid shadowing and that can really um, get in your way if you're trying to do another injection deep to reinjectate. Generally, it's not that big of a deal. Now the fluid that you see in the subacromial subdeltoid bursa here usually dissipates within a few minutes or so. So if you block the subdeltoid bursa with 5 or 8 mils of xylocaine and came back in 20 minutes, you'd see only a thin, a thin hyper, um, hypoechoic line. Um, it's a lot of uh, volume uh, that's required to keep this bursa uh, elevated. So if you're doing a procedure and you need to dissect the bursa away, then it's good to have another 10 mils of sterile saline 
just uh, in case um, your targets are not visualized well.